Hi, welcome back to the channel. We're going to read Al-Anon literature today, and today is November 21st. So November, November 21st, we're gonna read um, Courage to Change, Hope for Today, and One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. I'm really grateful that you're here because I need the readings and we're gonna do it together. So I'm not alone and you're not alone. We have this time to present. Presence is the theme for me and my, uh, my recovery, at least for today, just for today. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with one day at a time in al -Anon. I opened up the page and today's page is 326 in all the readings and with an, a tolerant, uncritical awareness of others and ourselves. We will gradually change our personalities for the better. And um, that's from a reading uh, September 2nd and one day, day at a time in Al-Anon. And um, I opened this, uh, the page here and um, my note card was, I've been asking uh, for signs from my higher power so that I can release and um, let go and let God, you know, I'm doing the footwork in my recovery and in my life uh, and um, trusting in a higher power to see what the results are from that, like to do the rest. Um, in theory and in knowledge is one thing, uh, but up until just recently, um, I've been witnessing how um, I've been able to uh, witness that and to see where where I'm, you know, still holding on. And um, it's been an interesting. Uh, journey the last uh, the last few weeks and um, it's good to reflect on that for me um, so that I can I can um, change change once I know what the what uh, what my problems or my issues or what I call them um, you know the shortcomings then I can work on adjusting and changing them one day at a time. So, and then today in the lesson, uh, the Course in Miracles lesson today was, um, fear is not justified in any form. Fear is deception. It attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be and therefore look upon a world which is impossible. Not one thing in this world is true. Not, it does not matter what the form in which it may appear. It witnesses, but to you, your own illusions of yourself. How foolish our fears are. Yeah, it's something, yeah, I'm, how are you feeling about the fears? Are you able to witness those? I realized that um, a lot of, I would say 99.9.9% .9 of my shortcomings and my issues stem from some type of fear that I'm either aware of or unaware of. And um, I'm working on being aware of what they are so that I can witness that and realize that they're all deception of my mind. So, uh, all right, so let's move on. Let's do the actual reading. So grateful to see you and uh, read your comments and um, see how you're uh, working with each other, servicing to each other. And um, so here we go. Uh, someone persuaded Mr. J to attend an Al-Anon meeting. His wife had finally joined AA and was devoting herself to sobriety and to developing herself as a person through the spiritual elements in the AA program. Mr. J frankly didn't like it. He and his wife had entertained a great deal at cocktail parties and such. And her, her sobriety, her being sober, 
interfered with these activities. To him, it was perfectly ridiculous that anyone of their social standing should admit to being enslaved by alcohol. <laughs> Even after four or five Al-Anon meetings, he still couldn't understand why his wife found it necessary to continue with AA now that she was sober or that Al-Anon had anything for him. So today's reminder, when I consider how people limit themselves by keeping closed minds, I learn that pride often makes recovery difficult, both for alcoholism and from the emotional sickness of living with an alcoholic. I see how necessary, I see how necessary it is to accept changes in my patterns of living if I really hope for a serene and orderly existence. So some people don't know how badly they need a new way of life until disaster overtakes them. Right, pride often makes recovery difficult, both for alcoholism and from the emotional sickness of living with an alcoholic. And um, yeah, just because we get sober or we start a recovery program doesn't mean that our our um, significant others, our spouses, our family members are going to necessarily be thrilled about that because then it sheds light on them. It, it, it puts change into the situation. Like, how are you going to have a cocktail party now? How, what are we going to say to our friends? I was um, invited a couple times just recently uh, do it, you know, to um, go have drinks with a friend. She's, uh, she's just, uh, she's a new friend of mine through doing some readings. Um, I was doing some, she's a regular uh, and she lives locally. So I'm doing some readings for her, uh, astrology readings. And she's like, you know, we need to just go out and have a cocktail one day. And so I found myself saying, okay, that sounds great, but I've not yet told her that I'm sober. And um, I was like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? You know, without making her feel bad? Uh, or will I be able to handle that? Will I not make a mistake and order a drink? Because, you know, in my life, I am, I'm now been sober for almost two years now. And um, honestly, I know that um, my, uh, my partner uh, at, at the time when I started Al-Anon uh, and then I went into AA as well, was not too happy about that. Like, and then my, my mom or my kids were like, I didn't think you were, you had a problem. You know, like you'll get that from family. I don't think you have a really, I don't really think you had a problem. But like, you know, if you do or not. Like I knew that when I said today, I won't use. And I did. And then today I won't use. And then I did. And then I was using all the time and all the time. Like I had it all over the place. And then I was like, I realized I, I wasn't able to stop. And that was a rude awakening. That was like a dark moment. And, um, you know, and then you hear people say, oh, I didn't think you had a, oh, no, you're done. You know, like you, you have to just, you know, it's, it's, it's your life. And, you know, like I could see a difference now in how I'm able to, you know, put one foot in front of the other. You know, this al Alan program is very helpful to me because I grew up in alcoholism with my with my grandfather, my dad, you know, and just a continual cycle because they grew up with alcoholism. So like we get that distorted thinking and then we want to squash those feelings or we want to fit in or like just it's just like I know for me this is good. So yeah, so but what do you guys think? You know, with holidays coming, um, being triggered by family, absolutely. 
because we have holiday dinners and normally during holidays, I would always, you know, have a few cocktails and a few, you know, gonna go out in the back, you know, have, you know, something. And then there'd always be some type of fight <laughs> or argument. Oh, do you remember when this happened? And it's, you know, you're laughing and they're not laughing, and, you know, this whole thing. And you're like, how did this happen? How do we, how do we trigger each other? So using some of the, 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 um, the tools helps like pause, knowing that's gonna come, having a sponsor, having meetings, having your books ready, putting yourself like, okay, I'm gonna take a walk right now, you know, take the dog for a walk if you're visiting or, you know, like wash the dishes, <laughs> you know, find that time for yourself so that you can regroup. Those are things that I do. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but it sure does help me. And then I can listen and be aware like, it smells good in here or this food tastes great or you know like how are you you know asking a family member so what what have you been up to and just listening just listening being present with them seeing how that feels so right let's do page 326 in Courage to change, because we need some of that. Sometimes I think that because I've been in Al-Anon for a long time, I shouldn't have any more problems. When difficulties do arise, I feel something is wrong with me or with the program. So actually, in some ways, I have more problems than ever. When I came to Al-Anon, I had only one problem. I didn't know how to fix the alcoholic. <laughs> My life was completely in shambles, but I swore that I was fine. Today, I know that I can't fix anyone but myself. And I challenge myself daily to seek a richer, more meaningful life. I'm taking risks, I'm facing fears, I'm making changes, I'm speaking up, and making myself available to life. Here we are. So I'm bound to run into snags here and there. Sometimes life doesn't follow my blueprint. I get overwhelmed and want to crawl under the covers and hide. And such, at such a time, it helps to remember that Al-Anon doesn't take away problems, but it does give me the courage and insight to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Today's reminder, in handling my difficulties, what's important isn't how much time I have in Al-Anon, but how willing I am to implement the tools of recovery. Uh, Al-Anon doesn't grant immunity from problems. It does offer a healthy way to deal with them. And there's a quote from H.W. Beecher. It says, um, troubles are often the tools by which God fashions us for better things. Troubles are often tools by which God fashions us for better things. It's like he's shining us up. Here's a, like shining us up. Rubbing the lamp for that magic to happen. Here it is, opportunity. Holidays are here. <laughs> opportunity. Like today, my mom calls. She's like, So, what are you going to get? What are you getting for? What are you getting them for Christmas? What are you getting the kids for Christmas? And I'm like, I don't know yet. She's like, where do you want to have the presents? Because I'm supposed to go up, up um, to visit my parents or my mom, you know. You know, this will be the first year without my uh, stepmom. Thinking about her. 
and um, yeah, so just my mom and uh, my sister. And, um, but I don't know, we're going the day after Christmas. So I'm like, well, we kind of wanted to have Christmas, but we have to, you know, have Christmas here. She's like, do you want the presents there? Do you want the presents here? I'm like, I don't know. So what was really cool is that she said, okay, honey, just think about it and let me know. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, okay. Because there would be a time when I would be triggered. I'd be like, this is too much for me. I don't know. You know, I don't want to talk about it right now. And, um, but, you know, it's something to think about. I'm going to consider it and um, let her know. You know, something small like that it seems small, but it, it can be big, right? Like, uh, like I want to make the right choice for everybody. That distorted thinking, like I'm, I have to worry about everybody else, but how, what makes sense for me? And then I'll see if it's okay for them, right? So let me see, just for today, just for today. I will strengthen my mind. I will study, I will learn something useful. I will not be a mental loafer. I will read something that requires effort, thought and concentration. I will try to live through this day only and not tackle all my problems at once. I can do something for 12 hours that would appall me if I had, uh, that I had to keep it up for a lifetime. So I can just know that I can get through it. And just for tonight, I will be humble. I will give my shortcomings to a power greater than myself, trusting that doing so can bring about changes in me that I could not bring about by myself. Trusting in the higher power. Because <clears throat> I can't do this by myself. I need help. With honesty, openness, and willingness. H-O-W. Honesty, openness, and willingness. And God can restore us to our right minds when we grow near to God. God discloses himself or herself to us. Yay. All right, we're going to say the serenity prayer at the end of this. I, I did forget to say that, but if you've been returning, then you know that's what we do at the end. And I'm looking forward to that essence of presence started uh, a series of presents paintings uh, and I'm just really enjoying the whole process just laying out the paint and just until I'm done you know like just being present with my higher power as I imagine it and just you know letting uh, trusting the colors that I that I choose that I'm connected to the God of my understanding and then I just go at it and then see what I want to do. I just like feel, just be there. I'm actually present and aware of that. So it's been interesting and, and um, just trying to have God disclose himself or herself to me. The gender is really, I wonder like God gender are you does it matter i just think you know the the, the way that english work, you know works you know there's a gender and they're also like it happened you know there's gender in italian and spanish and you know many languages so that we can identify there's gender in in archetypes and planetary archetypes like sun for instance for sunday but it's uh, the male energy of creation and then you know the moon is a gender of of the female right to hold space it's just uh it's interesting i guess it's male female feminine masculine um what are your thoughts on that i know you guys are interested in uh in um 
of spirituality and all kinds of that. So, all right, let's go with the next one. Step five in Hope for Today, it says, step five, admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs, suggest a specific order for actions. It also gives me a guideline for prioritizing the relationships in my life. First, I need to develop a relationship with the God of my understanding. This will be the source of my happiness and future recovery in Al-Anon. Let me see if I can adjust this. It's better. Okay. That light in my eye was the source. I see it. It's like bugging the heck out of me. All right, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> so. Okay, let's start over. First, I need to develop a relationship with the God of my understanding. This will be the source of my happiness and the future recovery in Al-Anon. Without such a relationship, I will not have the strength, guidance, or wisdom I need to live and learn the steps, traditions, concepts of service, and slogans. So my higher power will give me courage to develop the attitudes behaviors that bring about solid recovery. Step one through three, help me build this important relationship. Next, I learn to become at peace with myself. I wake up with myself every morning and go to sleep with myself every night. I spend 24 hours a day with that one person. So it is important that I'm at least tolerable, if not downright enjoyable company. I can't be that person when I'm overly controlled by guilt, fear, and resentment, and negligibility, aware of my gifts and talents. So steps four through seven, help me get to know and accept myself. Lastly, I start acting responsibly toward others. The best way to heal that guilt and resentment I've been lugging around is to take a good hard look at the people I've harmed and do the best to make amends. So I can even go one step further by carrying a message of hope instead of hurt as I may have done in the past. Steps eight through 12, help me clean up my past and plant seeds of benevolence in the future. Thought for the day, in what order of importance are my relationships today? And um, there's a quote from One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. It'll be page 141. The steps are a guide to total good living. Hmm, this is so good. I need to develop a relationship with the God of my understanding first and foremost. For me, what's coming up again is uh, my connection spiritually with my art so that I can uh, slow down and let go. Let go of the outcome, be aware of where I'm at and what I'm doing and how it feels. And um, the spirituality of imperfection, to keep it simple. And um, sometimes doing nothing is a solution. I love it. I like that it also um, talks about, uh, where is it? It says, um, without the relationship with my higher power, I will not have the strength, guidance, or wisdom I need to live and learn. And my higher power giving me my courage to develop the attitudes and behaviors that will bring about solid recovery and solid ground. Recovery to me is grounded, grounding, grounding, reality living in this earthly realm, so body, 
mind so that my mind isn't overtaking me and my mind has this information, this guidance, the readings, the suggestions, so that my mind is filled with those things instead of the distortion that I grew up with, with the alcoholism and uh, in the spirit so that I can connect with something beyond me. And that's people here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so people in, in our room here and also my sponsor and people in meetings, the readings, the actual presence of talking about it and feeling it, the prayers. So having a psychic change in order to change, we need to have that psychic change. And the psychic change is, is the combination of the mind, body, spirit in my um, experience. So with that said, we'll go ahead and say the serenity prayer to end this. And then we'll come back tomorrow, God willing. And um, it's windy out. I love the sound of wind. All right. So go ahead and let's go. Say it. Say it with me, okay? And let's take a nice deep breath in and out. Be here right now. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So God's will be done. So keep coming back. It works if you work it. And I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow.